Welcome to iLecture Online and here's another example of how we're going to find the electric field near a special shaped object. In this case it's going to be a spherical conductor with a certain amount of charge on a conductor. We need to find the electric field about two meters away from that conductor. And this is under the title Gauss's Law because with Gauss's Law this is really not that difficult of a problem. So let's take a look on how we would do that. First of all let's draw the cylindrical conductor. So, all right, so cylindrical conductor like so. There we go, assuming that the conductor is very long. The cylindrical conductor has a radius of 20 centimeters. So the radius here, R, is equal to 20 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.20 meters. All right, now that cylindrical conductor has a charge distributed over it, and again, just as with all uh, conductors, the charge, the excess, excess charge always distributes itself on the surface of the conductor. So you can imagine that all around on the surface, we will have excess charge evenly distributed around the conductor, like so. And the charge density, we use the letter sigma for that, is equal to 0 0.50 microcoulombs per square meter, which means every square meter surface has a total charge of 0.5 microcoulombs, or 0.5 times 10 to minus 6 coulombs. We want to know what the electric field strength is 2 meters away from the cylinder. So let's say at a point like this, two meters, and I'm assuming that would be two meters away from the very center of the cylinder. Typically that's how we want to look at it. And even though I didn't say that, I can just assume that's the case. And then the question is, how do we do that? Now, that would be a very difficult problem if we didn't use Gauss's law, but Gauss said, hmm, if you draw, and of course I don't have quite enough room, but if you draw a Gaussian surface, like in this case I'm going to draw a big cylinder encircling the small cylinder, the cylinder that has all the charge on it. So think of a big Gaussian surface made up of a large cylinder that encloses the smaller cylinder with all the charge on it in such a way that the edge of that Gaussian surface goes right through the point of interest. I'm trying to find the electric field there, and I can imagine that since this is all positive charge, the electric field will be emanating away from that, or in a direction radially outward from this inner cylinder, and you can then imagine that these electric field lines would then go through the Gaussian surface in all directions, up, down, forward, backwards, at any angle, you'll have electric field lines emanating away from this charged cylinder. And Gauss said, that the strength of this electric field multiplied times the area of that cylinder should equal the charge enclosed within that cylinder divided by epsilon sub naught, epsilon sub naught related to k in that fashion. All right, if that's true, we can then write the equation that the integral of E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon sub naught. I'll write this out here so we don't get confused. There we go. Now, since we drew a Gaussian surface in such a way that the strength of the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field anywhere along the surface has to be a constant because the surface is equidistant away from this charged uh, cylinder. Because of that, E is a constant. I can draw that out of the integral sign so this becomes E times the integral of the dA, which is the little surface elements along the surface of this Gaussian surface, right? So if we think of all these little dA's and we add them all up, we get the surface of this Gaussian cylinder. And that equals the Q enclosed divided by epsilon sub naught. Now, this is what we're looking for the strength of the electric field at the surface. This would be the area of the Gaussian cylinder. Of course, the area of the Gaussian cylinder has an area of uh, a radius of two meters, so let's call that R sub G, the radius of the Gaussian surface. 
and let's call that R sub C the radius of the conductor, because those are not the same in this case. All right, and the R of conductor here is 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters, where the radius of the Gaussian surface is 2 meters. So the area of the Gaussian surface, since it's a cylinder, and we're going to ignore the very ends, because there's no electric field coming out of the ends, the electric field is going radially outward from this inner cylinder, we can then imagine that if we draw a cylinder and we want to find the surface area of the cylinder, that can be found by taking the circumference of the cylinder, which is 2 pi r. Now we're dealing with the Gaussian surface here, so we we'll want to put r sub g there, times the length of this cylinder. And the length of the cylinder would be the length of the Gaussian surface right here. Let's call this L. All right, so the area of this Gaussian surface can now be written as E times area, which is 2 pi R of the Gaussian surface, R sub G, times L. So that would be the total area of the Gaussian surface, not including the ends. And that has to equal the Q enclosed divided by epsilon sub naught. Now the charge enclosed then depends, of, of course, on what the charge density is on the inner cylinder. The charge density is point 0.5 microcoulombs per square meter, and then we have to multiply that times the surface area of the cylinder. And just like we have it over here, the surface area of this cylinder would be 2 pi times the radius of this cylinder right here, so it would be the circumference, so it would be 2 pi r sub c, right, times the length of the cylinder, so that would be the area of the inner cylinder, times the charge density sigma. So take the charge density per unit area times the area of the cylinder, that gives you the total charge that's enclosed within the cylinder, divided by epsilon sub naught. And now we can simplify this equation for the strength of the electric field. Notice that we have a 2 pi on both sides, so that cancels out. Notice we have an L on both sides, that cancels out. You cannot cancel out the R's because they're not the same, right? One is the R for the Gaussian surface, and one is the R for the cylinder inside. They're not the same. But we can now divide both sides of the equation by R sub G, which is the radius of the Gaussian surface, and we isolate E on the left side of the equation. So here we can now write that E is equal to R of the sub c, r sub c, which is the conductor, times sigma divided by r sub g, which is the radius of the Gaussian surface, divided by epsilon sub naught. Okay, at that point we can go ahead and plug those numbers in. Remembering that epsilon sub naught is equal to 1 over 4 pi k, and 1 over epsilon sub naught is equal to 4 pi k. So maybe what I should do at this point is sub substitute for epsilon sub naught. So write this as r sub c times sigma divided by r sub g. And 1 over epsilon sub naught is equal to k times 4 pi or 4 pi k. So let's just write that in like that. And now we can go ahead and plug in what those numbers are. r sub c is 0 0.2 meters. Multiply it times sigma. Sigma was given as 0 0.50 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per meter squared. We now multiply that times 4 pi. And multiply times k, 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per kilo, per not kilogram, I keep thinking uh, about Newton's law of gravity, per coulomb squared. There we go and divide the whole thing by the radius of the Gaussian surface, which is 2.0 meters. There. And that should give us the strength of the electric field at that location. Let's plug in the numbers. We get 0.2 times 0.5 e to the 6 minus times 4 times pi times 9 e to the 9th, and the whole thing divided by 2, and we get a electric field strength of 5,650, round it off, 5,650 newtons per coulomb. So that gives us the strength of the electric field at the edge of the surface, and of course strategically we place the edge of the Gaussian surface at the location where we want to know the strength of the electric field, and the direction of course would be radially outward. Now one way to write that 
since the radially outward is um, kind of like we can use the, the uh, vector r for that unit vector r. So we can say that the electric field is equal to the magnitude, which is 5650 newtons per coulomb times the r vector or the r unit vector. That means that it's radially outward from all locations away from the conductor. So that would be the strength of the electric field in all directions, really outward from our inner cylinder conductor that contains the charge. All right, hopefully, by sh seeing a few examples like this, things are starting to make a little bit more sense. Uh, to help you, I will do a few more examples with different shapes to see how each time you can draw a Gaussian surface around the shape and find the electric field strength at the edge of that surface, which again is strategically placed at the location where you're being asked to find the strength of the electric field. All right, so if you still don't quite get it, take a look at my next video and see if that helps you further understand how to do these.